Tonight, I'm gonna to show you guys how to replace the seat covers on a Ford truck. So what we have here is a seat out of a 2000 Ford Excursion. This is gonna be the same from 1999 all the way to 05, F250s, 350s, and Excursions. It's gonna be really similar to the other Ford vehicles in that, uh, like the trucks and things, and also just other vehicles in general, it's gonna be pretty similar. So this one has a little bit of foam damage, you can see, uh, but pretty much all the damage is just on the actual seat cover itself. You can see here um, and here. So hopefully when we get underneath there, the foam looks like it's in good shape. Uh, these are from a limited excursion, which they're uh, like 75% leather, and then we've got vinyl on here as well. Um, the seat covers that we're gonna go with are full vinyl. Um, I've used leather, I like leather a little bit better. Um, this truck is on more of a budget, so we're going with vinyl. The leather's not too much more expensive though. So you can see this one has the limited logo. Um, it just doesn't have some of the pleating uh, from the center there, which some people like and some people don't, so no big deal. And then we've also got an armrest here. Uh, I'm gonna try to show you uh, pretty in depth. We're gonna look at some close-up stuff on this kind of seat specifically, uh, but the general idea and the way we do this will apply to a lot of other things. So the first thing you're gonna need is uh, hog rings and hog ring pliers. Um, try to spend a little bit more money, even if you may not be doing this for a job, even if you're just doing it for yourself, uh, having nice tools is gonna to make this job so much easier. I just, I mean, get some good tools. So this is a terrible tool, don't get this one. I was just testing this one out to see if it was any good and it sucks. Uh, this is one from Amazon. It was on like one of their top sell lists or something, so I figured I would give it a try. Uh, at first I had to modify a bunch of hog rings to work, and then I just ended up modifying the tool. So uh, let's go ahead and get a little bit closer and see what we're going to need. You can do this job on the floor. I prefer a uh, steady workbench like this, that way I can sit down for a lot of it. Uh, for the video, I'm probably going to be standing just so I can kind of stay out of the camera's view. Uh, so on the passenger seat, this is gonna be a Torx bolt. On the driver's side, it's an 18 millimeter. Uh, under this cover, when we take it off, you'll see that's a Torx bolt, or it should be. Uh, we gotta take this cover off here. Uh, you're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver for this trim section. And then on the bottom, there are 10 millimeter bolts, so we're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket um, and a wrench. Some of them, uh, these back ones, most of the time, you can't get a socket on, so you're gonna need a wrench. Uh, 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench is awesome. Um, that's really gonna save you a lot of time. So definitely use one of those if you have it. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and take off this trim section here. So we're gonna need our Phillips head screwdriver and also a flat head, because we're gonna have to pry a piece of this off. So I'm gonna move the camera so you can get a better view. All right, we've got a screw inside here. It'll come off like that. And uh, it's a good idea to have a box somewhere to put this stuff. You know what it looks like? We've got both of these broken off, so that's not good. It'll make uh, disassembly a little bit easier, I suppose. There's a tab back here, a little pull tab, like a trim tab you need to get out. Um, you can use a trim tool, which works just fine. I'm not going to go grab mine, we'll just use a flathead. That comes out. And then this knob right here will just pry off like that. Sometimes they're really, really stiff. That one wasn't bad at all. Keep turning, there's going to be two screws down under here, or there's supposed to be two. Inside there. Phillips heads, there's supposed to be one here, but it's missing. Okay, there we go. Keep all my parts in the same spot. All right, and now we'll kind of finagle this thing off. There we go. And then, think what we'll do if this hole is big enough we're just gonna unplug the connector down here all 
Yeah, it kind of sucks that that broke off, huh? Okay, um, then we'll have access to these 10 millimeter bolts. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do all of mine uh, with a ratcheting wrench. All right, now we've got the seat bracket loose. There's, uh, I think there's only one connection right here we need to undo. We'll just pry this little clip out. We should have the seat bracket. Ah, nope, we gotta do the seat belt too. There we go. Okay, there's the seat bracket and the wiring harness. All right, the next thing we'll do to go ahead and continue disassembling the seat will be the armrest. Let me change the camera angle here so you can see that. Okay, um, if your armrest is really bad, just go ahead and cut it right around here. That'd be the easiest thing to do. I'm going to show you how to do it the hard way, in case you want to reuse it. Yeah, there we go. Sometimes those are a big pain. That wasn't too bad. So there's the bolt inside there. Let's see what size that is. T50. Yep, that's it. All right, there's the armrest. You can see how it's supposed to look inside. So next up, we want to go ahead and take off the lumbar adjuster, which is over here. And it's going to be Phillips head screws. Let me get a better camera angle and zoom in for you guys. Okay, just pull the seat cover back and you'll see the two screws. One here, one on this back side here. Okay, after those are out, we're gonna take these two bolts here. They're gonna be half inch bolts. Then what we wanna do is this top section is gonna come off in this direction. Um, there's a little clip down inside here on this other side. I'm gonna have to zoom in, get a good camera angle on this because it's a little bit hard to describe without seeing it. Okay, so this plastic clip here is holding a plunger in. There's a top and a bottom to it. And you're gonna need to pry in between here like this while also making sure the little ears of this clip are opened up so the plunger can come through. And uh, when I get this thing out, you'll be able to understand better because you'll be able to see the whole thing. So I'm prying this way while I'm making sure the clips are pushed down. Okay, there we go. Now I'll take the whole seat, the whole seat back and push it this direction. Push it and wiggle around. There we go. So now it is off and you can see this plunger here. And hopefully, let me see if I can show you this clip. There's the clip. So hopefully that helps you understand how it works so you can get it apart. If you don't take off that lumbar support um, knob, then this will make it difficult because you'll have to have the two pieces together while you're doing the job. All right, now we can pull the seats apart. <clears throat> this goes to the little lumbar switch with the knob. So take a good look inside here so you can see how this cable is routed. 
It's kind of a tight fit. It's really not too bad. So there we go. We'll go ahead and take the seat top and we'll do that one second. First up, we're going to do the seat bottom. Um, so now that you have the seat bottom off, if you have a set of seat covers, as in driver and passenger side, this is the time you want to make sure you're installing the correct one. So they're going to be um, not the same. There's going to be a pocket on either one. And you want to make sure your pocket is on the right side for the install. Um, we're going to go ahead and flip this thing over. And we're going to take off these clips here. You're just going to usually uh, depress and then pull them upwards. Sometimes you have to have a little bit of a help with the screwdriver. And uh, sometimes they're really tight. And you got to get your knees on there. So, hey, look at this. That's interesting. That one's just glued on there. So on these kind of seats, the foam is going to come separate from the frame. Uh, just keep that in mind. Don't freak out if it comes off. I'm just pushing down here. And then I'm going to do all four corners. And work it up. Don't pull too hard, just do the corners because there's gonna be some uh, hog rings in here holding the seat cover to the cushion. And we don't wanna mess up the cushion or the support bars down inside there. So it looks like this has had some repair. That's interesting. I guess that's why this is glued over here. Probably instead of being clipped. Okay, so we've got all the sides up. Now we can go ahead and go in with some side cutters and uh, take these hog rings off. Okay, I've got the seat cover pushed back here and there's three hog rings right there where my thumb is, right there, and right there. And we're just gonna cut those with side cutters right in the middle. We have the same thing on the sides. You can see down in there. So I know it's kind of hard to see it's really difficult to do this um, one-handed and, and show you guys what's going on. So anyway, you have three here, uh, three there, and three there. And I think that's it on this seat. Yep, that's it. There may be some in the middle uh, right there, but I don't think so. We'll just take a look when we get to it. So let me put the camera back in the tripod. And we'll cut those little rings. Okay, I need some heavy duty side cutters. Ones for electrical work usually won't cut it. Okay. Yep, yeah, looks like there's none in the middle there. Don't know if you'll be able to see these, but it's the same concept. Okay, so now the seat cover is off. You can uh, throw this thing away or you can use it for uh, the next step that's coming here in a minute. All right, so now we've got to go in and remove all the little pieces of hog ring that are inside here. Uh, needle nose pliers work well, especially some angled ones. So you can go in here and grab the loose pieces, but you also need to grab the pieces that are deep down inside there. And you'll just kind of twist them out and you'll have to work them out. So what these are actually attaching to is metal rods that run down here. You can barely see they're a little bit of a red color. See that? So and those are hard metal rods that run through the foam. If you pull up too hard on your seat cover when you're removing it, um, and you don't know these are here, you can rip them out of the foam, and then you've got to buy all new foam unless you uh, have some way to repair it. So let me pull out 
all these little hog ring pieces and we'll move on to the next step. All right, once you get all the hog ring pieces out, um, you want to make sure you clean off your workspace really, really well. Um, I like to count and make sure I remove two pieces for each spot. Um, because when you clip it, it comes in, in halves. And if you can account for all of them, you can make sure there's not any on the table. Um, you would really be surprised how easy it is to put a hole in your brand new seat covers. So we'll clean everything off real good. Make sure there aren't any pieces of metal left on here. And then it's a very good idea to put something down, even though you've double checked. So um, we can use, use our old piece here. So we'll stick it on there and grab our new seat cover and get going. Um, this part is going to be um, a little bit difficult. You're going to need to put the new hog rings in and um, spreading the foam out and getting the pliers down inside there is kind of the hard part. So you want to make sure everything is centered before you start. So here's our new uh, little hard piece that our hog rings are going to go around. Let me get a little bit closer here. All right, so this is the new piece that the hog rings are going to go around. And they've already got a perforated hole. You can barely see it. Some of them don't. Let me grab a hog ring here. And what you're going to do is the hog ring is going to go around this hard pipe and then down over that bar. And then it's going to clamp shut. So let me give you an illustration here of how the hog rings actually work. So you got spring-loaded pliers that are spring-loaded to close like that. And they have little grooves cut in them to hold the hog ring like that. And then when it actually closes up, it does that thing right there. The tighter you squeeze, the smaller it gets, and you get a little triangle like that. So the goal is to get uh, these little hard pipes clipped together with the metal bars inside. So anyway, you want to make sure everything is centered you have an equal distance um, on either side around here. And then same thing on the sides. So let's go ahead and start with uh, the front because I think it'll be the easiest part for me to video and you guys actually see what's going on. Get a couple hog rings out. Sometimes you'll need uh, multiple attempts if you've got a really close together cushion like in this case. Okay, I'm going to do my best to video this. It's going to be kind of hard. So that's one of our spots right there. We want to get the hog ring around here and also around that. So I like to first get the hog ring around the uh, pipe on the seat and then kind of hold it like this. And then we're going to push it down and get on that pipe. There we go. Pinch it in just like that. So um, double check after you're done, make sure you have the equal amount of space here, like that, as you do on the other side. Just to make sure everything's lined up. You don't wanna put this thing in off center. Uh, let's see if we can get the next one in the camera here. Hook the seat side first. There we go. <clears throat> Stick it on there. Sometimes as you uh, push down, the hog ring will catch the side of the foam uh, going down like this and kind of rip it. I guess it's not that big of a deal, uh, but just be careful of it. All right, see if we can get the last one in. Okay, here it popped through the seat side. And there we go. Got to do it kind of quick because uh, your hand will fatigue pretty, pretty fast, believe it or not, holding that. Uh, cushion back and try to do the hog ring and everything at the same time. So if you want, you can double check, make sure your lines uh, look good and everything once you do your first one so you know you're, uh, know you're nice and straight. Get three more hog rings over here. Three per side. Um, I mean, you can, do, you can do more if you want to. I don't really think there's a reason to. So go ahead and make sure this is tight uh, in this direction. 
And then we'll put some hog rings down inside there. Okay, I'm going to try this angle a little bit different with uh, the flash on. I really want you guys to see how this works. So here we have our pipe on the seat. It's this hard round thing I'm calling the pipe. Then we have our metal bar in our three points that we're going to put our hog rings around. So make sure the seat is tight and straight. Get a hog ring in the pliers. Start it around the seat side. And then push down and grab that bar down there. There we go. Whew, that is hard to do, one-handed and left-handed. <laughs> But it's all for you guys, so you can save a million dollars fixing your seats. All right, let's try it again. I'm gonna do this one right-handed. Oh, damn it, there we go. Left-handed ruined it up. Okay, push down. And grab that pipe so this one here you can see didn't get a good grab around that bar on the bottom I was trying to do it left-handed so you could see better but I don't know if I can do it come out don't you rip my seat there we go okay we'll try that one left-handed one more time just because I want to Okay, start it on the seat, poked through, maybe two-handed. Yeah, there we go. Okay, just one more. All right, so this side is done. We can go ahead and do the last three hog rings over here. Same exact story, nothing different on this side. Also, the hog rings that came with, what is it? Hog rings that came with this tool, the Cascade tool, are better than the ones that I've bought before. Um, they have flat sides to them. Which is nice, I guess it's to work with this tool specifically. Okay, I'm gonna start with this one on the right. Poked it through. And left hand for the camera. There you go. It's really easy to use, so much better to use two hands. There we go. Let's see if we can get this last one in there first try. Okay, so you can use your support hand to push the pliers down, your second one to grab. All right, there we go. The next part is just going to be uh, forming and pulling the seat over. On some seats, you're going to have Velcro down inside these channels, and you're going to want to make sure you push this really down firm and get into those channels. This one doesn't have it. So you're going to start by pushing your fingers in this corner from the inside and rolling it out. Now, a lot of times you'll have this corner stick in like that, so you want to go in and pop it out. There we go. And uh, once we get it all the way um, over the seat, you can really start yanking on it and uh, make it look good. Really get it nice and formed in. And as of right now, there's still nothing holding um, the seat cushion to the frame, so keep that in mind. Okay, the next part is why it's really important to make sure your workspace is clear of hog rings and other sharp stuff. 
because we've got to turn the seat over here in a minute. our little pin there. We can really stuff this thing in from the top and pull this vinyl up tight. Pushing this down and pulling the vinyl up. Make sure we don't have any wrinkles or anything in the top. Okay, we should be Pretty close to being able to put the clips on. We'll just take a look up here and make sure everything is straight. You can see we've got a little bit of a wrinkle here, so we need to pull that out when we have it upside down. Um, but it looks good. We'll do the front and the back first, and then we'll do the sides. So the way this is, uh, just kind of hooks over there. You know what? I don't need to see this, right? That's why you're watching the video. Let me get a better camera angle. Sometimes it helps to actually get on it with your knees. So if you do this on the floor, that's when you got a little bit of an advantage. Instead of having to climb on a table. Okay. Here's the front. We really want to make sure we pull this thing out. Get the back on. Make sure it still looks straight and happy. good. Look at any wrinkles we've got and uh, maneuver the seat around. We need to make sure when we're done we've got this little guy right here exposed. Then we can cover it back up in a little bit. So as long as we can see that we know we've got the seat cover in the right place. All right, we'll move on to the top. All righty, now we're gonna work on the seat back. It's easiest to start on the other side. So get this thing turned over. And you have a long clip right here, which is really similar to the plastic clips that were on the bottom. Sometimes you can get a screwdriver in there. Sometimes it's easier to use pliers. There are going to be hog rings on this one too, so don't go crazy until you get to them. You don't want to mess anything up. First thing that's going to be difficult is these side corner, these side parts. So I'm going to get those first. I like to put the seat back against my body and then pull them back. And we'll turn it over to the other side, get both parts exposed, and then it makes it a lot easier. Okay, there we go. Um, so if you want to save your seat covers because you're doing a color change or something, uh, keep peeling back easily. I'm just going to cut these. So this is where the armrest goes. Makes it a lot easier just to cut this seam, at least on this side here. 
So you want to be careful when pulling this thing back because this one has the Velcro in it. So you'll want to push down on the Velcro strip while you pull up on the seat cover because you want that Velcro to stay on the seat. And we do need to actually peel this thing back. You can't just pull it off from the top um, because we're going to have some hog rings. All right, now we've got down to the hog rings. The first set is right inside here. There may be only one set on this one. One, two, three. Check for any more. Looks like we've got one more section of Velcro at the top instead of hog rings. So we'll make sure we just push down on the Velcro that's inside here. Push it down into the seat so we don't pull that off. And there we go. Got our old seat cover out, and it looks like our foam is actually in pretty good shape. We've got a little bit of loss right here on the edge and some discoloration, but not a big deal. We'll be able to reuse it. So uh, go ahead and inspect everything, make sure it's in good shape. All right, we'll see if we can get this in the first take. Make sure your seat is facing <laughs> the right way with your uh, Velcro on the front, pipe on the front. And we'll make sure we've got everything perfectly aligned. And we'll start putting the seat cover on. So you can look here and use this for your alignment guide. You've got four of these corners to use for alignment. And just Feed it over the top. Just keep working it down until we get to this first uh, Velcro spot. All right, so there's our first Velcro spot here. So when we get to that, we're going to want to make sure we push it down into the seat. attached I got a little ahead of myself thinking about the video so I need to actually put a mat underneath this so we don't scrape it up so uh, give me a second I'm gonna do that see here we go look little hog ring pieces man got carried away could have ripped up the new seat Piece. Just get your hand inside the seat cover, follow it down like that. Once you get it about to, um, I would say almost to the to the pipe where you're going to put your hog rings at, you really want to start pulling down and uh, making sure everything is aligned. Because once you get down to that point, um, it's gonna make it a lot harder to stretch the material. Make sure you're following your contours and your seam lines all the way down. Pulling it and 
stretching it real good over the headrest. Okay, and we're down to the hog rings. So we can double check our alignment. Looks like I need to be rotating it a little bit this direction. The whole cover. There we go. That'll work. So um, same process I showed you on the hog rings before. I'm not going to zoom in on this. Same idea. So when you get to the part of the armrest nub, put your hands inside here, grab the whole thing, and pull as much over it and down as you can. That's going to keep it tight as you get the rest of it down. against. Watch out for this armrest nub inside here. You can rip your seat if you get stuck and you don't know what's there and you just start yanking on it. All right, so our seat, our seat cover is all the way over. Now we can fine tune and uh, go inside here and stretch it around and kind of make sure the foam is all filled out. I don't really care for this um, seat cover as much as some Chevy ones that I just put in. I don't know if it's because it's vinyl or what. Like for example, that stitching really isn't perfect. Now we got to go in here and make sure that our Velcro is set. And um, this is something you can do when you're folding the seat down, or you can do it afterwards, it just depends. So there's a wing inside here. I'm grabbing it and pulling it away so I can get the Velcro stripped down inside there. And I'll know you got it when you have crease like that. See how this one is, is not? So we'll do the same thing over here. Velcro is seated really good. All right, cool. Now we can flip it over and get this hook set back on. Little plastic hooks here. These are a little bit looser in general than I would like. Um, usually, this part's really difficult. Oh well, it is what it is. 
I think it'll work out fine, especially once it starts to get stretched. Next up, we need to go ahead and cut the hole for the armrest. So we've got our armrest ready and our new cover. You're gonna need a razor blade by itself instead of a utility knife. I think you get a little bit more control that way and it's a little bit better, um, I don't know, I think it's a better idea. Use a smaller tool. So what you wanna do is pull the seat cover down in this way, kind of work it over this spot, <clears throat> this spot. You can pinch either side and kind of move it down this way. And then I'll just cut it X over the top of it. And that'll get us started there. Then we need to find our hole threaded hole, which I think it's going to be right here. If you cut the wrong spot on this one, it's not too big of a deal uh, because the armrest does cover up a lot of it. There's a bigger hole here. You can feel it. We're looking for the smaller hole, uh, which is right there. you've got it cut, you can go in with some snips if you want to. Make you a little circle. Okay, now we've got the threaded hole exposed. We got more room when installing this cover. And then uh, I like to point it away from me like this. And start the cover here. There's not a whole lot I can tell you on this other than it sucks. <laughs> This is pretty difficult. This as tight as you want. You don't want this to be flopping all around. You need a lot of hand strength to get these things on here. Sometimes you can get, uh, if you have a flat plastic tool, stick it in there, but you really want to avoid using a screwdriver as bad as you want to do it. Um, it would really suck to rip this seat cover. Just got to kind of deal with it until you get there.
work it in, work this seam down. Make sure you really got that thing closed in well. All right, there we go. Now the top is ready. Get the bottom back over here. And we're gonna do the opposite procedure here where we're gonna push that seat onto this little nut. Um, let's see, first up we'll go ahead while we have this thing a um, little bit easier to access. And we need to cut our hole for the um, lumbar adjustment. Get the razor blade here. Lumbar adjustment is right inside there. If you're not sure which side is the lumbar adjustment, this side has foam on it, so you can't get to the hole in the seat cover over here. Go from the inside out if you want to. This little razor blade usually fits in there. Okay, so what I did here was I just depressed it a little bit so when this does go over the adjustment knob, it uh, helps pull it tight just a little bit. We've got to feed this guy down inside here. You can also take this little thing apart um, if you want to, but I found you don't have to. Oh my gosh, that was a pain in the butt. Okay. over that so we can see it and get that socket over there. There we go. Whew. Really underestimated how difficult this was to do on camera. Once we've got that side in, we need to go ahead and make our holes over here for our bolts that we took out. Uh, what I like to use for that is uh, a tool like this, or a very small flathead screwdriver, and I'm going to get it basically uh, lined up over the bolt holes, and then poke a guide hole down through there. Then we'll go ahead and put in one bolt before we do the other one. This will help us make sure that both of our holes are aligned. If you punch both, both of them in, you run the risk of uh, possibly shifting on you and you've got an extra hole in your vinyl. Okay, so that'll work. few threads started and then we'll get this next one done.
Now we can stretch the seat cover over this hole. Now we've got to get this fitted and uh, get this sucker through here. push pin to go. So if you want, tighten it up there again. Okay. So we're going to the bottom here. There's only one screw, so I'm going to see if I can find uh, another one later on. I'm ready to get this thing completely back together. Okay. I'm going to see if we can get this back together uh, with this in place. I've never tried that, so we'll give it a go because we're already there. There we go. We've got one completed seat. And uh, looks a whole lot better than it did before. There it is. I know this was kind of a uh, quick and dirty video, but if I can do it, you can do it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Thanks for watching.